All right, let's get right to it. So the algebra problems. Here we go. First one, need a little help. Uh, number two. Who's number two? Ellie, ready? Okay. No, you don't have to come up here and do it. You're, you're going to tell me how to do it, though. You're going to teach me how to do it. Go ahead. Correct. All right. And when you get, I know this is a simple little thing that might get overlooked, but make sure it's written in order, standard form, because if you don't write it in order, I don't know if the A, B, and C values are all going to be correct. So minus 14x plus 23 is equal to zero. Then you go to the quadratic formula, which will be provided this Friday, this Thursday on the test. Negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Here we go, Ellie. What's the B value up here? Negative 14. So when I plug it into quadratic formula, 14 plus or minus, again, I don't know why people fight me, but hey, keep fighting. What number did you get underneath for the discriminant? 12. Yep, should have gotten 12 underneath. Again, we are not at the point in your mathematical career yet where you should get a negative number underneath the radical. You did something wrong if that happens, all right? That's all next year you do that, all right? This year, always a positive number. Over, what's it all over? Four. Fine. Thank you very much. Keep going, Ellie. 14 plus or minus, what did radical 12 simplify to? 2 radical 3 over 4. I expect all of you to get to that point. Now I know here's where we have a little trouble, and that's the reducing part. But from here, we should all be at this point, no problem. We should Now we have a little issue with the reducing. Again, the 4 goes to both sides of the plus or minus. So the first thing you need to do, reduce 14 over 4. Does everyone have one of these devices here? Yes? Does everyone have the ability to get one of these on that device? If you can do that, you can reduce. All you need to do, 14 over 4, I've been stressing this all year long, 14 over 4, and what will it give you back? The reduced version, 7 halves. So now I can say, all right, 7 over 2, plus or minus, Ellie, back to you. What's 2 over 4 reduced down to? 1 half, so radical 3 over 2. You can leave your answer like that. <coughs> if both denominators are the same, you can rewrite it using one denominator and write 7 plus or minus radical 3. Either one is acceptable. All right. Yep. So the 14 plus or minus 2x is Not acceptable. Simplest form. Other questions? Yes. Um, I have 3.5 plus or minus 1 half square root of 3. That is fine. That is fine if you have. But if this is like a 3 and this comes out to be a long repeating, non repeating decimal, I want it like this. I can handle 0. 0.5. That's fine. Everyone else, all good? All right, need somebody else now? Going on to number two. A little help from number one. <coughs> 18. 18x, again, make sure it goes in the correct order. It's called standard form. All right, Andrew, x equals... Plus or minus what ended up being the discriminant. Again, yep, all over. Uh, we just broke down in the previous problem. 12 breaks down into 2 radical 3 over 4. Reduce, reduce, reduce. Negative 18 over 4. Negative 9 halves, yep. Plus or minus 2 over 4 again. One half, I'll accept that. Or because the denominators are the same, I would also accept negative nine plus or minus radical three over two. Three. 
Negative nine, a negative divided by a positive. It's reducing a fraction. Two goes in the both. Right? Calculator also does it. Other questions? One last piece that I'll chime in with here. Why don't I reject an answer? Because usually when we're doing these problems, I got to reject usually the negative answer. Why no rejection here on either one? Bella? Correct. If you take a look on the assignment sheet where these problems were, did I provide you any diagram? No. So there's no reason to reject any answers. You only reject an answer if you get a negative side length. There's not even any sides here to begin with. Good though. Anything else? You got two more tonight. I know I haven't hand back your similarity quizzes and I won't hand them back until tomorrow, but believe me, the algebra is rough. We got to get better not only for Thursday, but when you walk in September to your class next year. Anything else? Okay, here we go. Last day of this unit. Dilations. I wrote these three words up there. I wanted to see if anybody remembered uh, during our uh, congruent triangle unit. We did, a, we did a little day on reflection, rotation, and translation. We grouped them into one title. Anybody remember that title? So they are transformations, yes, but specifically rigid motions, yes. Why do I refer to them as a rigid motion? Well, translation is this, what's a simple word for translation? Sliding it up, down, left, and right. And if you remember, if I slide a figure, does that change the size or shape? So what can I say about the two triangles? They're congruent. If I take a triangle and rotate it, a.k.a. turn it, are the two triangles still congruent? Yes. So we call those rigid motions because the two triangles ended up being congruent to each other. Which one did we not add into this that is also a pretty famous transformation? Dilation. Okay, why don't we put dilation with them? Because they wouldn't be congruent. Now we can put dilation in. They're not going to be congruent, but they're going to be similar. Why are they going to be similar? Ready? Just take my diagram here. Let's say I enlarge this figure. Do the angle measurements change at all if I enlarge it? So you're telling me the angles are still congruent. So by angle, angle, they're still similar. What if I reduce it? Do the angle measurements change at all? No, so that's why they're similar. A dilation produces similar triangles, and that's what today's topic is. Dilation. There is a couple definitions I need to give to you guys. Just a couple. All right, dilation. Enlarges or reduces a figure. And here's where the similarity comes in. Proportionally. Proportionally. So all the sides get twice as big. All the sides get half the size as big. All right. Center of dilation. That's my fixed point where the dilation occurs. What unit are we in? Seven, right? Unit seven. Unit nine, we do a whole much more detailed look at all these transformations. Today, all I want you to get out of it is if it's a dilation, I produce similar triangles. We've talked about that already. What's this? 
What's this in this unit? We've talked about this. Ratio of what? Ratio of? Ratio of? Well, if I go two to three, there's a ratio, but it's a ratio of what? Two and three would be the ratio of? Two, what do we call these? Well, I know they're sides. Corresponding sides. Thank you. Yes, that's the ratio of two corresponding sides. Two corresponding side lengths. And if you want to look this up, you can. I have no idea the mathematical background behind it. But scale factor, they call... K. They denote with the letter K. I don't know why. I'm sure there is a mathematical reason behind it. I just have yet to find it. All right. I talked already. It could be an enlargement or a reduction. Well, if it's an enlargement, everyone ready? If it's an enlargement, that K value is greater than one. Your scale factor is bigger than one if I'm enlarging a figure. Two, three. Three and a half, always bigger than one. Now, most of you would say if I have a reduction, it's going to be less than one. But no, 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 no. It is not less than one. It's between zero and one. Between zero and one if it's a reduction. So one half, two thirds. Usually the question I get right after is, anybody? Is that, well, is there such thing as a negative scale factor? And the answer is yes, there is. Okay, what happens to a figure if it has a negative scale factor? Andrew, give me a negative number. Negative four. It's not bad because that's exactly what first period did. What a coincidence, huh? All right, I don't need you to write this down. Let's say the scale factor equals negative four. What is happening to my diagram? All right. Just to show you, because you are honors, and I just don't want to skip over it. Let's say that's my triangle, and I'm going to apply a scale factor in negative four. Let's look at it without the negative. I got four here. Is that going to enlarge or reduce itself? Enlarge. So the triangle will get bigger. What's the negative do? Reflects it through the origin. So this is where my triangle would end up. That's what a negative scale factor does. It'll apply the scale factor number four, so it'll blow it up, and then the negative says, I'll reflect it through the origin. Okay, that's what it does. All right, I know you're excited. Questions on whether it's gonna be indu induced, reduced or enlarged. All right, let's try it then. I got figures A and B on the next page. We are going from A to B, A to B, enlargement or reduction. So let's look at number one first, enlargement or reduction. Definitely enlargement from A to B. There's no questions asked there. Here's where it starts to get tricky. It's in the second part of the question. Find the scale factor then. That's the ratio of two corresponding sides. Can you guys count the ratio? Can you count two corresponding sides? So I don't have to break out distance formula here. Okay, go ahead. Find the length of two corresponding sides. I'm going to pick these right here. Let's see. A, one, two, three, four. B, one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like four to five. How do, you, how do I write that then? Because couldn't I go four to five or five to four? There's a big difference. Big difference between them. Maddie? No, no, no. It just says, it's just showing you we're going from A to B. It doesn't say write the scale factor from that. It just, it's just letting you know we're going from A to B so you know if it's an enlargement or a reduction. Okay. It's, okay, there we go. It's getting bigger. So what do you got to know about my scale factor? It's got to be bigger than one. 
So if I write this as a scale factor, why isn't that correct? That's not bigger than one. Four over five is not bigger than one. That would be a reduction right here, right? So that's why I have to write my scale factor as five fourths or four to, or five to four. Does everyone see why? I'm enlarging it. Scale factor's got to be bigger than one. Do the same thing for number two. I don't need to ask you. We all know from A to B, it's a reduction. So you now know your scale factor has to be between zero and one. Don't give me a scale factor bigger than one. What do you got for me? Scale factor wise, scale factor wise. Good. Let's not play this game here. What do you have? Letty? A third? One to three? Yep. Somebody asked in the other period, do you care if we reduce? No, not particularly. So if you want to leave it two over six, that's fine. Other questions? Yes, Bella. No, three over one. Well, since you are comparing another figure, you should have a number there that represents the other figure. I know we assume there's a one there, but I would put the one there. No, Nothing else? Yep. Probably not, no. But, but uh, here, here, hey. To me, this is different than just writing it like that. Like K equals one, like I know it's three, but if you go pull something like that and don't put a one, then yeah, I'm gonna take off, All right? But if you write it in fraction form, probably not. All right, here we go. Go ahead and graph both if you haven't done so already. A, B, C, D, E, F. is similar transformation. So I'm going to try to prove these two triangles similar to each other. Uh, how am I going to do it? Because I don't think angle angle is going to work on a graph. How am I going to show these two triangles are similar to each other? Okay, I can say BC and EF are in the same ratio as what other pairs? E, D, and BA, same ratio as AC and DF. How do I, sh how do I know what those ratios are? Distance formula, and I'm going to make it easy here, all right, so you guys don't have to do six distances. Group, let it. One, two, three, four, five. I guess it is. I'll change it there in a second. Thank you. Uh, group one, you guys get to pick what two corresponding sides you want. A, B, and D, E. Go ahead. Go at it. A, B, D, E. Simplest radical form, of course. Group two, what do you want? B, C, and E, F. And then, sorry, group three, you're left with, not that it's a bad thing, but you guys are left with D, F, and A, C. Okay, just do your group's responsibility. I don't need everyone doing six distance formulas.
Group one, you ready? Distance of AB. Let's do this. Two radical, two, nice, DE. Four radical, two, got it. All right, BC, group two. Radical 10, yep. How about EF? Ooh, two radical. Did you get square root of 40? Group three, DF. And AC. How are we going to, okay, it was isosceles, I guess, huh? Uh, how are we going to figure out if they're all three corresponding sides are in the same ratio? Let's set it up. Ready? Is 2 radical 2 over 4 radical 2 the same as radical 10 over 2 radical 10? Is that the same ratio as radical 10 over 2 radical 10? Obviously, I know these two are the same ratio, but how do I get all three to look the same now? Suggestions, because I'm not really too sure if those two are equal to each other. Suggestions. Well, anybody know what this is going to reduce down to? The radical twos would cancel out. Two over four is one half, so that ratio is one half. The radical tens are gone. Am I just left with two? Nope, there's a one up there. One half. And one half. What did we just find out about the triangles? They are similar. Triangle ABC is similar to ABC DEF by side, side, side. Make sure we put the old tilde, not squiggle there. Anything from you guys on dilations, finding the scale factor. All right, I do, before I let you go on your own, I do just want to show you one thing, because chaos erupted first period. I probably can't get the, I did, we'll try. What uh, homework's on page 514. I just want to show you something on the first problem you're going to do tonight. But I figured. So if you want to get set up, that's fine. Let me just bring back up page 514.